For at TV, the world is thinking. There's such a temptation now, because uh, particularly, well, at the late 90s and now more intense now, to make, you know, assertions about parallelisms between Iraq and Vietnam yes. and so on. Right. Are you getting a lot now of, of people w either in wishful thinking or genuine sort of seeing parallels, which, I mean, for example, Christopher Hitchens dismisses as nonsense, uh, the Iraq-Vietnam parallel. Uh, do you see some resonances uh, I between do. now and then? I do. Yeah. What are they? Um, so, from you know, the great Mark Twain once said that history does not repeat itself, but it rhymes. Mm. And I do see right, and I do see some rhyming um, between Vietnam and Iraq. Um, I have to say, I also see some differences. Um, there are commentators who draw differences, similarities between the two wars. And I'm amazed at the kind of um, prosaic level that they're comparing the two wars. So you'll see someone say, in fact, the war in Vietnam was largely rural, and the war in Baghdad, the war in Iraq is largely urban, and hence the two are different. And that strikes me as a kind of very prosaic and superficial way to access the similarities and the differences. For me, the similarities are that we're talking about um, discretionary wars that are not of great intrinsic national security import right, to the United States. There are wars of choice, right? right? Um, that the United States cannot summon the political will and military, um, military strategy to win. And in both cases, the enemies know that their job is not to defeat the United States military to every last man. It's merely to prolong the war. And break, Erosion, just exactly yeah, yeah. break the will of um, their oppressor, you know, as they see it. Um, so there is that similarity, and I think that similarity dwarfs many of the more mechanical kinds of differences. Do you think uh, similarity also in deception? Yeah, there is a similarity in terms of. Well, there is quite a again mechanical similarity in the use of intelligence in justifying the decision to go to war. So many in the audience know that the Gulf of Tonkin resolution came about as the result of manipulated intelligence. And of course, I don't need to remind anyone in the audience of um, Colin Powell's speech to the UN. So the, at that level, you see um, a, you know, an obvious and glaring similarity. But I think at the deeper level, you do also see a credibility gap between what the administration's own pronouncements are and what people believe about the war.